YouTube. Let's hop right into this video. Non-binary God. You know, uh, let's grab it here in a second. Yeah, just watch it. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the rainbow spirit who shatters our image of one white light and refracts it into a rainbow of gorgeous diversity. I believe in the church of everyday saints as numerous, creative, and resilient as patches on the AIDS quilt, whose feet are grounded in mud and whose eyes gaze at the stars in wonder. I believe in the calling to each of us that love is love is love. So beloved, let us love. I believe, glorious God, help my unbelief. Amen. So that's an absolute disgrace. If y'all don't know, for you people who aren't Catholic, you know, or even in that nature, that this sounds like a very obviously it's a mockery of the Apostles' Creed. You know, they say at the very beginning, what did they say? To rise in body or spirit, and let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. Let's confess our. It's supposed to say our. Let's get. Let's confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, and they're saying we're believing what? I believe in the non-binary God. In Jesus Christ, who had two dads. <sighs> you know, man, I just don't understand because this is what I was saying earlier to myself. I was sitting with my wife, and I was just like, you know, why is it that they always go after? We have to keep saying this, and I'm gonna keep saying this, but it seems like they they choose. Jesus, that so they choose the Catholic faith a lot, or they choose the Christianity. Well, same thing, but you know what I mean. They choose, they choose Protestants or Catholics, Christians, one and the like. But still, they seem like they're always going after the Christians, man. They make fun of the Apostles' Creed. That's crazy. But they think it's a joke. She said, "Sparkle Creed," and Jesus wore a tunic. Uh, what a tunic! And his baby son of two dads. Like that is blasphemous. It's an absolute disgrace. And I, you know what? These people, this, I think there's some people in this world, and I, I, I'm starting to become more and more and more and more belief in this. You know, I used, to, like I said, I used to be more. What could you say? A little bit more ignorant, a little bit more naive, but now I'm really starting to believe there's true evil out there. I used to know there was evil out there, but I didn't know it came in all these different forms. But the fact that they're making fun of the Catholic faith and they're making fun of the Christian faith by doing this sparkle and making Jesus have two fathers and love is love is love is love. That's that's where they got y'all. That's where they got us. You know, when I was a young kid, man, growing up, that's that we, that used to be the biggest argument, man. I never gave into that. Right. The only thing, like I said, I, I messed around with the LGBT. I tried to see what they were really about when I was going through a part of my life, but I, at no point did I really ever completely grasp onto the love is love is love. I kind of grasped onto validation part of it, right? That if I just feel a certain way that maybe it's because I'm this, right? And uh, that is one of the biggest lies that they've been telling us over and over, that love is love. I think that phrase right there has been the downfall of the LGBT. Because when you said love is love and you didn't really define it, what true love was, you made love as anything I choose to love, which is why we got foolishness like this going on. We got this kind of foolishness going on. Um, there's a lot of stuff wrong with this video. Y'all, If you, you know what I'm talking about. A female doing this? <sighs> Uh, she supposed to be a female version of a priest like there's just so much wrong with this dude and I don't get it and it seems like I used to say that women were at the forefront of this whole thing but men have really really taken over this thing really taken over this whole 
joke thing, just like we saw with the drag queens of debauchery. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I refuse to call them what they want to be called because that's blasphemous. Well, it's not blasphemous, but it's a disgrace to the people who truly have decided to live that religious life. It's a disgrace to them. So they're not going to get they're not going to get that out of me anymore. They're called the drag queens of debauchery. I will give that shout out to the the, the Hodge twins. They did, they did uh, come up with that. At least that's the first people I heard ever say it. So, man, well, let me know what y'all think, man. These people are disgracing the Catholic faith, the Christian faith, by saying that Jesus had two dads and doing the Apostles' Creed and calling it the Sparkle Creed. What have we come to? Like, you know what, man? It's just like I never thought, I never thought I'd be a part of this. I knew that there were going to be some things like this and there was going to be some troubles. But, you know, even when I've read my Bible and stuff like that, you know, go to mass and we've talked about this stuff. I didn't think that it would happen like this, man. I never thought I'd see it. I just always thought it was kind of a, eh. <laughs> but no, man, this stuff that you see back in the day, like people really going against God, really making a joke of it, really doing their own religious, doing this satanic stuff and all that. I didn't think that it would be like this, but here we are seriously having to really go after this. It's not even a joke. It's not even something to laugh about. Thank God we got social media. We can see this stuff way more. But I just remember being a young uh, young kid growing up, and I thought that it would always be kind of a in the in the shadows kind of thing, if that makes sense. When I used to see this, when I used to think about this kind of stuff and how evil would rise, I thought it'd be in the shadows, like you'd have to go digging deep for it. It's wide open now. We just looked at a video a couple days ago where they were at the pride parade and they had the thing that says Satan loves. I never thought it'd be that blatant that people would just come out and say, oh, we love Satan or Satan loves us. It's just like, what? <laughs> we thought that would be like hidden. That'd be like amongst the evil, evil people, like the people who were just wearing hoods. You couldn't see their face. No, it's wide open. And I'm still in disbelief right here. The biggest lie the devil can ever do for us is to make him make us really think he doesn't exist or to make it seem like he actually loves us and that Satan is not against us, but God is. If let me say this to end this, God is the just God. He is. The justice will be served, but I want you guys to listen to me when I say this. Some people think that God is looking for every reason to punish us. That's not the truth. God is looking for any reason to love us. When you turn to God, he's not sitting there like, well, it took you so long. God is there embracing you, hugging you, loving on you because he loves you that much. You don't get to know God. You don't get to God. You don't get to heaven. You don't get to all these places. Because of our own merits, you get there because of how much God really loves you. And Satan has truly tried to prove to us that God is waiting to rain down hellfire on us. When the truth is he's waiting to embrace and love you and show you how much he cares. And when you're ready to turn to him, he's going to be right there waiting for you waiting for you. They will celebrate in heaven for you coming back to the father. But what they want you to believe is that God is waiting to punish you. And so they tell you that Satan is the one who loves you. They tell you that living your life and being sexually deviant or doing whatever you want to and being, being as free as you want, get naked in front of the kids. That's true love. God doesn't love you. He hates you. That's what Satan wants you to believe wholeheartedly. He wants you to question God's love. But the truth is God loves you more than you can ever, ever imagine. And once you come to that true embrace, you'll realize that this life they're trying to feed you, these lies, it's not as good as the life as you think it is. God does not hate you. He is waiting for you to turn back to him, just like he waits for me to turn back to him. Please know how much God really loves you. He's not waiting to bring down the hammer. He's waiting to bring down his love. But you have to make that choice. That's the free will. That's true love. Don't let Satan confuse y'all, man. Peace.